Hello everyone, Scotty M has made another video where he basically repeats the same lies and moronic arguments that he made in his previous videos. He also goes back to his favourite subject. This is the reason why he's trying to desperately brush this part of history onto the carpet. Because it was Alexander Hamilton who was a contributor to the Federalist Papers, which is a collection of 81 papers which was written in 1787. Like I said in my previous video, I am going to ignore his desperate attempts to change the topic and focus on the issue which he is desperately trying to run away from. Um, even Edward G. Griffin says this here. Those bankers are not capitalists. Most of those bankers, I guess the best word you would say for them is they're collectivists which is another word of saying socialist. Again, the means of production were privately owned in Nazi Germany. Industry was not collectivized, but in the hands of a private capitalist. Scotium hates this fact. Indeed, nothing angers him more when you remind him that Hitler and Mussolini privatized state-owned industries. I have also done some research on this Edward G. Griffin he keeps citing as a source. Well, it appears that he is a well-known conspiracy theorist who claims that HIV AIDS does not exist and also claims that he knows a cure for cancer. Yes, Scotty M. attacks economists and scholars whose papers are published by a well-respected university was quoting a conspiracy nutcase. You could not make this up. It's absolutely hilarious. It's not important that, of course, capitalists were strongly opposed to fascism. You know, that's not important. As if that's not in relation to do with Nazi Germany, you know? I've pointed this out several times before and I'll show it again. Well, in Germany they did. Of course, Scotty M was talking about the life and times of Thomas Jefferson because he is desperate to change the subject. A lot of times libertarians and supporters of the free market are called fascists, right? It's a stupid, inane remark to make. How could we possibly be fascists when fascism was developed specifically as an alternative to laissez-faire capitalism? That that was expressly the goal of the thing. And of course, Tom Woods had went on to say this. We talked about fascism as a third way, allegedly, between capitalism and communism, it rejects both. So anyone saying that a libertarian is a fascist obviously doesn't understand what fascism is because it was self-consciously designed as being in opposition to capitalism as well as to a communism. Now, of course, we accept the fact that fascism opposed communism. We understand that. But here's an interesting clip. This is laughable nonsense from the Mises Institute. It is a known fact that Mussolini, that led the first fascist government, appointed a free market economist as his finance minister. So, Scotty M's so-called experts can't even get that right. Mussolini appointed a free market economist as his finance minister. Oh, and then Scotty M tops it off by quoting Edward G. Griffin again. ...own over the capitals of those regimes, and you get down to the hard core of what they believe, you'll find that they believe exactly the same. What he had also pointed out was another important point, and that was the very fact that, of course, fascism and communism do oppose one another. However, the important point being is that being a classical liberal that I am, and this, you know, social democrat or one trying to connect, you know, fascism to some sort of libertarian movement, as if, as if they say that free market capitalism is basically something to do with Nazi Germany, as if they blame capitalism on Nazi Germany, despite the fact that they're so diamet diametrically opposed. Here's what Tom Woods basically says. So this is the embodiment of the principles of, of, Nazi, of, uh, of fascism that we've seen. The, the charismatic leader, the nation trumps the individual, the, the so-called public interest trumps the private interest, the opposition to both capitalism and communism, the opposition to classical liberal restraints on the powers of government 
all these features, and of course political centralization, well, Hitler couldn't have been clearer about that, that he's not going to have any states' rights or nullification in, in uh, certainly not secession or anything like that in Germany. You can forget about that. There's going to be one power center, and it's going to rule over everybody. So you see, Social Democrat 01 is religious of so- Utter hypocrisy from the Mises Institute. Both the Italian fascists and the German Nazis supported capitalists in their respective countries. That is why they implemented privatization measures. Many free marketers, such as George Reisman and Thatcher, supported the fascist government of Pinochet in Chile. This, of course, destroys Woods' claims about right-wing free marketeers being against dictatorial government. Mussolini appointing a free market economist more than 90 years ago could have told you that anyway. Socialism. And it wouldn't matter how many times you point out the very fact that what collectivism essentially is is synonymous to socialism, meaning it's exactly or nearly the same uh, by definition. And you can look at both definitions, I, I, you know, I've pointed it out so many times, I don't even need to go into it, but socialism and collectivism are the same by definition. When you talk about socialising something, that's what you're doing, you're collectivising it. So I'm not going to go into that again, but he has religiously tried to brush this under the carpet, okay, he's tried to religiously ignore this, and the reason why he tried to make it out in his recent video response that, oh well, all this stuff to do with Alexander Hamilton and collectivization and socialization and, you know, all this stuff to do with um, socialism being related to collective. We have been over this several times before. Privatization is the complete opposite of economic collectivism. It is transferring property out of the collective sector, the public sector, into the hands of a private individual. Both the Nazis and fascists privatise state-owned industries. You absolutely hate that fact, don't you? That is why you resort to talking about collectivism, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and the Industrial Revolution. Stick to the topic. It's here. Individual rights are subordinate to the good of the nation, and the public interest trumps the private interest. Seriously, people, is he trying to claim that Nazi Germany that essentially put the public interests over the individual's interests, a movement that basically subordinated the individual's rights, all for the sake of the collective, and we've got evidence of that. He made it clear in his own words. Adolf Hitler couldn't have made it clearer. He said in 1932 Otto Strasser, I am a socialist and a very different kind of socialist from your rich friend Count Reventlou. He also said, and it is so clear. Otto Strasser records Hitler saying that capitalists have worked their way to the top through their capacity and on that basis of selection, which only proves their right race. They have a right to lead. The fact that you quoted Stresser, one of the first people to accuse Hitler of being pro-capitalist, is just laughable and demonstrates what a moron you are when it comes to this issue. Stresser also recounted that when he asked Hitler about nationalisation of industry, Hitler replied that it would lead to the destruction of the German economy. It's funny how you forgot to mention that. <laughs> Stresser actually confirms that Hitler was a right-wing capitalist supporter. The fact that you attempted to quote him to aid your argument shows how deluded and ignorant you are. Absolutely laughable. And then finally we talked about political centralization also as being a central, so to speak, feature of fascism. So why is the word centralization so important to look at in relation to what he was talking about there? And because it's something strongly related to fascism, as fascism's all about the strong central power. Uh, why why is centralization an important word to look at? Because, ladies and gentlemen, because when you speak about the word socialize or centralize or collectivize, it all means the same thing. 
I mean, let's put it this way, what does it mean by centralisation? Centralisation simply means that you're basically bringing something together into a group. That's essentially what centralisation means. Another stupid argument. Who was the great centraliser in British politics? None other than your hero, Maggie Thatcher, who weakened local councils and gave more power to the central government. Indeed, you have advocated centralisation yourself, claiming that the Scots should submit to the centralised authority in Westminster. Again, you see this is compatible with, uh, this is quite compatible with fascism. He says every individual and group should work for what's best for the state. So it's Hitler's view that it doesn't matter who owns a factory as long as the factory owner does as he's told. As long as the owners do what they're told, it doesn't matter if they own it or not. So here's Hitler. He says, our socialism reaches much deeper. It does not change the external order of things. It orders solely the relationship of man to the state. Then what does property and income count for? Why should we need to socialize the banks and the factories? We are socializing the people. That quote comes from a book called Hitler Speaks, which has now been discredited. But let's have a look at the quote anyway. Socialism reaches much deeper. It does not change the external order of things. It orders solely the relationship of man to the state. Then what does property and income count for? Why should we need to socialize the banks and the factories? We are socializing the people. I love it when they use this quote. It not only comes from a discredited source, but the morons actually admit that Hitler did not socialize the economy. He kept the economy in private hands. The remark about socializing the people is simply sophistry. Socialism is an economic system. Another argument they like to use is that capitalists in Nazi Germany had no control over their property. Wow, that lie was debunked years ago. At Nuremberg, company directors were found to have exercised massive power over their companies and became rich under Nazism. Indeed, that article published by Cambridge University demonstrated how much autonomy Nazi capitalists had. Krupp had permitted and even encouraged slave labor, signing detailed contracts with the SS. Thousands had died from hunger and beatings, not just at Auschwitz and far away, but in company factories at Essen. On July 31, 1948, after nine months of trial, Alfred Krupp was sentenced, along with nine members of the firm's board of directors. Krupp received a 12-year sentence. He had expected that. And then, surprisingly, judges announced that both his personal and company property would be confiscated, thus shattering the Krupp dynasty. Witnesses recalled that Krupp grew faint. I, I wouldn't bother. I, I really would not bother. Um, this video is more or less to show how irrational he is. This is from the person who attacks Cambridge University but relies on the theories of conspiracy theory looms like Edward G. Griffin. The same person who claims that if a government collects tax, it is socialist. The same person who constantly changes the topic to the life and times of Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, a period that had nothing to do with the Third Reich. So why do I bother responding to Scott Ian? Well, simply, I find it entertaining to see this fool break down after being smashed by fact after fact makes me a very happy man. Remember when this liar tried to claim the Nazis nationalised the banks when they actually privatised them? I presented recorded history that showed him to be a contemptible liar. The way he tried to back down from that lie still makes me smile. He was exposed as a liar and an utter buffoon. 
So whilst YouTubers like Jason Andrew grew tired of Scott M's moronic stupidity, I still find it very entertaining. <laughs> Indeed, I think Scott M's videos should be placed in the comedy section of YouTube. They are hilariously stupid. It. It wasn't changing the subject at all. It was pointing out the fact that capitalists in America were strongly opposed to fascism. That's what it was doing. And the reason why he doesn't like the fact that that's related to fa the Nazi Germany. It is not related to Nazi Germany, you moron. Especially when, when, especially when capitalists, by and large, supported Hitler in Germany. German post-war recovery was slow partly because its leading industrialists were on trial for war crimes. Among the German manufacturers accused of using slave labor for arms production was industrial giant Krupp. Gustav Krupp had been a loyal Nazi. He helped fund Hitler's rise to power. He gave signed copies of Hitler's book Mein Kampf to his German workers. And Hitler reserved a special place for Krupp and his employees at the Nuremberg rallies. Kitty Werthmann was a survivor in Nazi Germany. And if this wasn't enough, he then proclaims a Tea Party nutcase a survivor, even though there is no evidence of her being persecuted by the Nazis. Those who survived the death camps and the concentration camps and other forms of political persecution other survivors, those who were forced to work as slaves for the capitalist quant were survivors, such as this individual. Leiden die meisten Überlebenden noch immer an den physischen und psychischen Folgen. 1972 baten sie Warta, damals noch im Besitz von Herbert Quant, vergeblich um eine kleine finanzielle Unterstützung. Sie reagierten hart und arrogant, gaben noch nicht einmal zu, dass wir dort für ihre Firma gearbeitet hatten. Sie haben uns gedemütigt. Wir sind dort hingereist und haben höflich um Hilfe gebeten. Wir haben nicht gebettelt. Wir wollten eine Unterstützung, denn die Warte hat uns krank gemacht. Erst haben sie mich zu ihrem Sklaven gemacht und dann auch noch zutiefst erniedrigt. Ich werde nie wieder dorthin gehen und an ihre Tür klopfen. Sie sollen mich nicht noch einmal demütigen. Ich habe meinen Stolz. Sie werden mich nicht noch einmal zerstören. Two political factions fighting each other. Communist Party was getting very powerful. So was the Nazi Party. Well, according to the history books, both the Communist Party and the Nazi Party had been banned in Austria. In fact, the only legal party in Austria before the Nazis came to power was the Christian Social Party. Hitler also gave us free radios, and then he nationalized our radio station. That is odd, T to nationalize something that was already nationalized. The radio station was already owned by the government. So she's talking complete nonsense. Everything was being nationalized. Another lie that goes against the recorded history. Everything was nationalized after the war. When the Nazis were thrown out of Austria. See, here is the recorded history. The Nazis did not nationalize Austria's industry. Indeed. Many Austrian industries were taken over by German private industry. I.G. Farben, for example, took over the Austrian chemical industry. And I.G. Farben was a private company. He also nationalized our healthcare system. We had, before Hitler, an excellent healthcare system. Privately insured, we had good doctors, we had good hospitals, we had a lot of good research. That all stopped. Another blatant lie. The Austrians had public health care since the 19th century under the Habsburg Empire. Austria actually had a very generous universal health care system, especially in the 1920s and 1930s. 
There is no record of the Austrians having a system of private insurance because they did not have a system of private insurance. Your source actually insults the victims of Nazism for a rather disgusting reason. Let us take a look at more of her comments and compare it to the undeniable recorded history. We got a very, very good law. We thought the Equal Rights Amendment. Well, equal rights for women. Haven't we heard that here too? <laughs> I thought it was a terrible fate to have been born a girl. So in that comment, she insulted all German women who suffered under the rampant sexism of the Nazis. What a disgrace. But sadly, there is more. I did not like what I saw. Girls of age 16 were pregnant to have babies for Hitler. Oh, Hitler wanted lots of babies. He know what he all had in mind. And all this, you know, the lifestyle was very, very, very loose, you know. I did not like, so that was the educational system. When it came to sex, the official line was strict. Girls had to keep themselves pure for marriage. One rule was drummed into us. Keep your blood pure. It's not just yours. It comes from afar and flows a long way and everyone's future flows in it. Keep the vessel of your immortality pure. It was clear. Girls who became pregnant outside of marriage were thrown out of the BDM. Young people were very different then. Now the average age when they become sexually active is 15. It was over 20 for us. I remember how proud we were if a male youth leader fell for us. But we shrugged our shoulders and said, I'm a German girl. A German girl is chaste and modest and becomes a mother as soon as she marries. The government decried that everybody has to be equal, have an equal income. Those who worked hard paid 70% taxes and those who were down here, they were getting the equal income like those who worked hard. We look at the recorded history again. That claim turns out to be another lie and a great insult to the poorer workers whose wages actually declined under, Nazis, under Nazism. Keep in mind that she gave this speech at a tea party rally, which means the aim was to compare Hitler to Obama. And of course, we all know tea party members are idiots. American taxpayers are the Jews for Obama's ovens. Barack Hussein Obama the new face of Hitler. Obama's plan, white slavery. We came unarmed this time. By the way, she blatantly lied about Hitler introducing a equal rights amendment. That is clearly not true and an insult to Hitler's victims. That's what, you know, the American Revolutionary War was all about. That's why he wants to pull you away from it. It is off topic because the American Revolution had nothing to do with the Third Reich. The fact that you keep going back to that topic shows how desperate you are. Furthermore, Jefferson was a slave owner, hardly the decent man you make him out to be. Indeed, use of slave labour led to several people being hanged at Nuremberg. Owning slaves is contemptible. So, what we have learned from Scotty M's video is that he prefers to listen to conspiracy theory nutcases and moronic imbeciles at tea party rallies 
than learn about true recorded history. Like I said, his videos should be put in the comedy section of YouTube. They are hilariously stupid. And you have to wonder, what stupid thing will Scotty M say next?